In this lesson, I will going to explain the base catalyst reactions of aldehyde and ketones specifically. And for that, first I will I will explain the general mechanism of these type of reaction, and then I will explain the five type of very common reaction. So number one type is called addition of HCN. Second, addition of sodium bisulfite. Third, aldol condensation. Fourth, Cannizzaro reaction. And the last, I will explain that the heliform reaction. And remember that I will also explain the mechanism of each type of reaction. Okay, now first I will discuss the base catalyst addition reaction. And these bases can be sodium hydroxide or it could be potassium hydroxide. Okay, when the reactions are initially done in these mediums, so they are termed as base catalyst reaction. Okay. So, first I will explain the general mechanism. The general mechanism of base catalyzed reaction is that first the reagent basically reagent reagent react with alkali or base. So, when it react with base, so it gives us a strong nucleophile. It gives us a strong nucleophile along with the water molecule. Okay, let me show you. Let's suppose our reagent is this nucleophile and this one, and we are reacting with which base? Okay, what will happen now? The base basically will deprotonate this reagent. So when the reagent will be deprotonated, so what will happen? It will become a strong nucleophile along with the water molecule. Now this is the uh, step number one. Okay, after the first step, when our nucleophile already generated or activated now it will attack on the carbonyl compound so uh, either we can use any of the carbonyl compound it could be aldehyde or it could, it could be ketone okay so now nucleophile will attack on this carbonyl co compound if you do remember that the carbon is partially positive so nucleophile will attack on the carbon and the pi bond between carbon and oxygen will break and this these electron will shift toward the oxygen so we will be having a intermediate ion the negative ion basically now this will be the ion now you can see the nucleophile is just directly connected with the carbon now this was the step number two okay now let's talk about the step number three in the step number three what will happen now this intermediate ion this intermediate ion basically give us the final product when it will it will be protonated okay it can be protonated by the water molecule so right now i will just write here the water molecule here yes so how it can be protonated now you can see this oxygen can attack proton of the water so we will get our final product that could be this okay now and in the last you can see the OH also recovered so they these are these are the three step general steps okay now I, I will explain the type of reactions okay first uh, the addition of HCN uh, okay let's suppose if I take a simple carbonyl compound either it can be aldehyde or it can be ketones right now I'm just mentioning only the carbonyl carbon because the all the reactions start on this carbonyl carbon so we must focus on that carbonyl carbon okay now uh, right now I am adding HCN to it so HCN is a substance that is very reactive to get HCN we need two chemicals uh, so we use sodium cyanide and HCl to get freshly prepared HCN so whenever we are using basically sodium cyanide and HCl so basically we are reacting the substance with HCN. Okay, moving forward, as I early, earlier told you that uh, the all the reaction will be done on this carbonyl carbon. So, and this is addition reaction. So, remember that uh, the reagent will be adding by the remove uh, by the breaking of this pi bond. So, we must know that which part will going to attach on the carbon and which part will going to attach on the oxygen. So, we know the positive and negative end of each substance right now if I just mentioned that the carbonyl carbon will be partially positive because of the highly electronegative oxygen 
and let's talk about our reagent in our reagent the hydrogen will be partially polarized because of the cyanide that is partially negative okay now a uh, very simple rule that the negative will connect to the positive so cyanide will going to attach on the carbon and the hydrogen will attach on the oxygen so this is the very shortcut and direct method to understand how the addition will occur in the carbonyl compounds so we were what we will be getting we will be getting this type of product and in this type of product we have two functional group one, number one functional group is hydroxyl and the second is cyano generally the name of this compound is cyanohydrin okay previously i didn't mention that uh, it could be aldehyde or it could be ketone let's suppose if i say this let's suppose if i say this one is acid aldehyde so our product will be like this and the name of this product will be acid aldehyde cyanohydrin so this was the direct method to understand the addition of acn okay the similar thing can be happen on the ketone or any kind of aldehyde or any kind of ketone that only the addition will occur on this area that is the carbonyl carbon okay now let's talk about the mechanism of this reaction as i already explained that in general mechanism we i just divide the mechanism into three steps okay the number one step is the basically activation of the uh, nucleophile right now first we will use sodium cyanide when sodium cyanide ionizes so it forms a very reactive cyanide ion or you can say very active cyanide ion and the solution is alkaline in nature or you can say the ph of the solution is more than 7 so we can say that the starting with a base catalyst reaction okay in the second step this cyanide ion basically attack on the carbonyl carbon okay now in the second step now this is this one is our carbonyl compound that the acid aldehyde the cyanide will going to attack on the carbonyl carbon and the bond between carbon and oxygen will going to break okay now what we will be getting we will be getting an intermediate ion in that intermediate ion oxygen will be having a negative charge so in the last step we must remember uh, for the base catalyzation is always a protonation step basically we use a acidic medium to give the proton to the to get the final product so in the last step the protonation will occur so our intermediate will get proton it can also get the proton from the water but right now i'm using uh, to mention the proton as h plus so the oxygen will attack on this h plus and we will getting our product so this is the final product this is also named as acid aldehyde cyanohydrin okay now let's talk about the addition of sodium bisulfite so first i will take a general form of carbonyl compound remember that it could be aldehyde or it could be ketones okay so i will i want to add sodium bisulfite so what i will get okay before uh, giving you the product so let me tell you a uh, very shortcut method that uh, the hydrogen in this uh, this whole reagent will going to attach with the oxygen so the rest of the part will act like a nucleophile and it will going to attach with the carbon so this is the very shortcut method to understand the addition of uh, the sodium bisulfide and we will be getting this product and this product is named as bisulfide okay let's suppose if i am using acetone ch3 yeah, you can see now it becomes because of 2 ch3 it become acetone so then our product will be named as acetone bisulfide okay now let's talk about the mechanism in the mechanism in the first step what will happen this sodium bisulfide get ionized to give us a strong nucleophile and okay this strong nucleophile in the second step will going to attack on our carbonyl compound and the bond between oxygen and carbon will going to break so we will be getting our intermediate ion and this intermediate ion like will be like this okay in the last third step remember that the third step is always a protonation step of base catalyzed reaction so we will give the proton to this molecule and we will be getting our final product okay now let's talk about the allyl condensation okay remember that before starting the allyl condensation we must remember two conditions 
for the aldol condensation this is the condensation process condensation means molecules get joined together so which type of molecule get joined together number one thing we can have aldehyde or ketone this is the first condition they must have alpha hydrogen this is the first condition that any aldehyde or ketone can undergo aldol condensation but they must have alpha hydrogen when we heat them in the presence of strong alkali such as sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide so what will happen then we will getting a product named as aldol or ketol remember that if we are using aldehyde so we will be getting aldol but if we are using ketones so we will be getting ketones okay now let's understand this thing with the help of simple direct reaction okay let's suppose we have this aldehyde now everyone know if you don't know this the name of this aldehyde is acid aldehyde okay then in this acid aldehyde this part will be named as functional group and the carbon is directly connected with the functional group is named as alpha carbon and now you can see this alpha carbon has the hydrogen so this hydrogen will be identified as or marked as alpha hydrogen so this means the first condition is fulfilled that we must have any type of aldehyde that must have alpha hydrogen okay now so what will happen let's suppose if i am taking the same type of molecule here so what will happen when we heat them in the presence of sodium hydroxide the both molecule will condense together when they condense together so they will be giving you this type of product now in this in this product you can see the we have two function group the first function group is aldehyde and the second function group is alcohol so by the combination of this aldehyde and alcohol the name of this condensed product is called aldol okay let me give you very shortcut method to understand this thing and then we will be moving toward the mechanism of this reaction let's suppose uh, these are the two molecule so this one is the first molecule let's suppose and that one is the second molecule right now i am just giving you a direct method okay in the first molecule so let's suppose this one is uh, carbon number 1 and this one is carbon number 2 and right now i am mentioning this carbon as carbon number 3 and this carbon will be carbon number 4 okay remember that i already told you this is alpha carbon according to this so remember that this alpha carbon by the loss of hydrogen will going to attack on carbon number 3 and the bond between the oxygen and carbon and the bond between the oxygen and carbon will going to break and remove, remove the uh, and also this one hydrogen will be attached to this so if you just now focus on this one okay here this one is carbon number 1 carbon number 2 previously carbon in carbon number 2 we have three hydrogen but now after the connection after the bond uh, linkage uh, how many hydrogen left only two it means the one hydrogen just moved so where it move it move toward the oxygen now this is the very direct method you can say this is the direct method to understand the condensation between two same molecule of aldehyde and the, the same thing can happen with the uh, ketone as well okay now let's talk about the mechanism of this reaction okay in the step number 1 what will going to happen so the molecule of acid aldehyde now this is the acid aldehyde right now i just highlighted or just make it one alpha hydrogen separately so now you can see this is the alpha hydrogen so what will going to happen in the step 1 that the base base because we are using sodium hydroxide the so oh group will be produced by the base and this base will going to attack on this alpha hydrogen and it will remove this alpha hydrogen as h plus so when it will remove this thing the water molecule will be eliminated and the first this acid aldehyde molecule will convert into a nucleophile now you can see by the removal of this h this carbon become uh, this carbon become negatively charged so the second step now this nucleophile will going to attack on the carbonyl carbon of the second molecule and then when it will going to attack on this carbonyl carbon the bond between carbon and oxygen will going to break 
and we will be having this intermediate ion now this is the intermediate ion and this is not the final product so we will be getting our final product in the third step what is the third step if you do remember in the general mechanism that will be protonation okay now in the third step uh, maybe this molecule will get the proton from this water molecule it can also get this even uh, uh, we can also use a uh, acidic medium for the protonation right now for the uh, for your shortcut I can I am just using a proton here so this oxygen will going to basically this negatively charged oxygen will going to attack on the proton and we will be getting our final product so this is the simple mechanism of aldol condensation okay now let's talk about the fourth type of reaction that is the Kanizaro reaction and remember that uh, in the Kanizaro reaction we will be using aldehyde and ketone without the alpha hydrogen now previously we were using the aldehyde and ketone with the alpha hydrogen now we will be using the aldehyde or ketone without alpha hydrogen or let me say that the aldehyde or ketone with alpha hydrogen give condensation reaction and the aldehyde and ketones without alpha hydrogen give Kanizar reaction okay the all the other thing will be same that we will be heating these aldehyde or ketone in the presence of strong alkali so what will going to happen here now this is not a type of addition reaction so basically what will going to happen that as we know that previously we were using the two molecules so here we will be also using two molecules so what will going to happen the one molecule will become carboxylic acid by the oxidation remember that because aldehyde when the aldehyde get oxidized so it will give us the carboxylic acid and the second molecule will give us alcohol now remember that how can we get alcohol from the aldehyde only, only by the reduction so you can say this Kanizaro type of reaction is a redox type of reaction in which the same molecule is being oxidized and the same molecule is being reduced so if you do remember this type of reaction is also named as disproportion reaction that the same molecule is being oxidized as well as reduction so how it will going to happen let me give you a simple example right now so we have a very simple aldehyde that is the form aldehyde now you can see okay let's check whether it has alpha hydrogen or not okay we know that this one is a functional group so do you think this functional group is linked with any of the carbon so when there is no link with the carbon so the, it means there is no alpha carbon and when there is no alpha carbon it means there is no alpha hydrogen so same thing no alpha carbon no alpha hydrogen so first condition is fulfilled that it must or you can say uh, these this aldehyde is without alpha alpha hydrogen okay now what will going to happen uh, right now i'm using two molecules here so when i will heat these molecules in the presence of sod sodium hydroxide even i can use potassium hydroxide so one molecule will go going to give us a carboxylic acid now you can see previously it was formaldehyde now it will become uh, forming acid and uh, I can also say uh, methanoic acid and the second molecule will become uh, alcohol so you can say how it happens basically the first molecule get oxidized and the second molecule get reduced so okay now let's talk about the mechanism of kinetic kind of reaction that will make you to understand it more okay so in the first step what will going to happen so this is the formaldehyde molecule and as we are using base so base will give us OH negative ion now remember this now this base will act like a nucleophile so what it will going to do it will going to attack on carbonyl carbon so when it will attack on the carbonyl carbon so what will going to happen the bond between the carbon the bond between the carbon and oxygen will break and we will be getting this ion okay in the step number two starting with the same ion so let me draw another molecule okay now this one is the second molecule so how this first molecule will behave like a nucleophile so a very special thing will going to happen the oxygen will make bond again so when it will make bond again remember that carbon only can make five bonds so it will remove H as hydride ion and this hydride ion this basically act like a nucleophile and it will attack on the carbon of the second molecule and the bond between the carbon and oxygen will going to break 
so what we will be getting this first molecule will become a carboxylic acid now you can see and the second molecule will become just just like a intermediate ion okay now in the last step we remember that uh, it is always a protonation so wet when we just give a uh, acidic medium or uh, uh, or you can say proton so uh, this oxygen will going to capture that pro proton and we will be getting our final product that is alcohol now you can say the first molecule becomes carboxylic acid and the second molecule become alcohol so this was the simple mechanism of kinder reaction okay now let's talk about the fifth type of reaction that is halophon reaction in this type of reaction only specific type of aldehyde or ketones just give this type of reaction when i talk about the aldehyde out of all the aldehyde only acid aldehyde gives this type of reaction or when we talk about the ketones in the all ketones only the methyl ketones give this type of reactions okay what are methyl ketones i will show you later okay so how the other reagents are what are the other reagents so basically the number one reagent is halogen we use halogen and this halogen could be chlorine bromine or iodine second we use sodium hydroxide or and even we can also use potassium hydroxide so, okay what will happen when these react with this specific type of as uh, aldehyde or ketones so a uh, product in uh, the first product that is formed that is called haloform and remember that uh, and the other products are sodium carboxylate and sodium salt of that halogen and the water so basically the main product is this because the reason is that this is a colored product so because of this colored product so this type of reaction is also identified as lab test basically it is a lab test this lab test help us to identify a specific pair of compounds for example uh, if we have formaldehyde and acetaldehyde or we have uh, methanol or ethanol or we have uh, methyl ketones comparatively to other ketones basically it gave a positive uh, identification for acid aldehyde we can say the acid aldehyde, aldehyde will form this colored halophone and but form aldehyde will not on the other hand when we talk about the second pair ethanol will give positive halophone test but methanol will not and in the last i must say methyl ketone always give positive halophone reaction and all the other ketone will not give this type of reaction okay now let's talk about the simple example of this and then after that uh, simple example i will like also explain the mechanism of this reaction so let's suppose we have a uh, acetone okay if you focus on this part specifically this part we know that this one is ketone name this part as methyl ketone so whenever you see this thing this part to any compound so it will going to give haloform reaction okay moving forward so let's suppose i am reacting it with iodine in the presence of sodium hydroxide so what it will give it will give me basically iodoform remember as i was using iodine so it will give us iodoform and this iodoform will show a yellow color so because of the yellow color we can say a positive test is given by this ketone okay and the other products are sodium acetate sodium iodide and water molecule okay right now this equation is not balanced we can use the balance we can balance this equation by the previous method we already understood in the previous classes so this is the complete reaction now let's move towards the mechanism of this reaction reaction let's suppose we have a methyl ketone so this is a methyl group here so so initially as we are using base so what will happen here so basically base will remove one alpha hydrogen so when it will basically attack on the alpha hydrogen and water will remove so initially what we will be getting we will be getting this ion r c okay here let me show you so when it will remove this h this bond will shift here and the double bond between oxygen and carbon will going to break and we will be having this type of ion here the double bond will form and this kind of ion we will get okay remember that as we have alternate negative charge in the double bond so it may have another resonating structure so because when it shift here so this bond this bond will shift here okay so what the other resonating structure will be yes this one 
negative charge hydrogen will be here hydrogen will be here okay now what will happen next now this ion will going to attack on the hydrogen right now we are using iodine so i will give the example of iodine so basically this ion will going to attack on the halogen and one iodine will going to attach with this carbon and we will be having this kind of product R C double bond O C H one H is there another H is there now here will be iodine okay now if I say directly what just happened in a single step because we have used one sodium hydroxide, one OH and one halogen. So only because of using one OH and one halogen. So what just happened? Only one hydrogen is replaced by one halogen. So you can also memorize this type of thing. Okay, let's suppose if I am using two OH and two iodine. So what do you think what will be the product okay yes the answer is very simple all the alpha hydrogen will going to replace by the iodine so we will be getting this product initially we will be getting this product that we will be getting this product that all the hydrogen will going to replace by the iodine now this is not the final product okay now what will happen now base will going to attack on this carbonyl carbon so when it will going to attack uh, with this carbonyl carbon so let me tell you directly the bond between this uh, uh, carbon and the this triiodo carbon will going to break and we will be getting this product we will be getting this product r c double bond O, O H, and and we will be having this ion. So basically, what will going to happen? This will be having a negative charge, so it directly attack on this carb, this hydrogen, and make us an carboxylate ion. Give us the carboxylate ion and the iodo form. Now this is the very simple and shortcut way to form iodo form. Now, now remember that this is the iodo form we are talking about, and this oxalate ion as we are using sodium hydroxide. So basically, it will going to uh, react with the sodium, forming a sodium carboxylate ion. Now these are the final product. 